numbers. All right. So natural numbers are sometimes known as the counting numbers. You may want to write that down. For instance, when you start counting, you start with 1, and then you go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's why these are considered the natural numbers. They belong in that category. All right. So maybe in blue right here, I'll just give you some examples. So 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 goes on forever. Those are the natural numbers. The next set we have on the outside here is whole numbers. The whole numbers are exactly the same as natural numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 only we are simply adding 0. Now the reason we have this diagram is you see that um, they're basically uh, a part of the other one. So I can say that this circle is really a part of that circle. All right, because you'll see that all those numbers are in there. The next one that we have is integers. Now, integers, for example, are all the numbers that are on that number line in the classroom. So if you notice in the classroom, we have negative 20 all the way to 20, I believe. Well, we can say that integers go all the way from dot, 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 negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. All right, so those are our integers. And if you notice, natural numbers are part of whole numbers, and the whole numbers are also part of the integers. And now we get into what we've been working on today, and those are rational numbers. Now, as you recall, rational numbers are just numbers that can be written as a ratio, as a fraction. So therefore, all of those ones that we've done so far can be written as a, uh, as a fraction, so they belong in there. Um, what would be some examples of rational numbers that we could also throw in here? Well, you could have, I don't know, let's say, fractions, any fraction. So we haven't dealt with those. So for instance, you could have one half. You could have decimals that terminate. All right. uh, you could have perfect squares, perfect cubes, so like the square root of 4, the cube root of 8, those type of things. They fall into that category. All right. Now, in that whole circle, those are all basically irrationals. Well, on the outside then, we have, over here, we have our irrationals. And examples of irrationals would be like pi can't be written as a fraction. The square root of 8 can't be written as a fraction. The square root of 10, the cube root of 10, all of these type of numbers. All right? um, those cannot be written as fractions. So that's why they fall in here. Now that leads you to believe if all, everything inside of that whole square is considered real. What I mean by that is um, when you put them into the calculator, for instance, they would kick out some type of number. Well, that leads you to believe there must be non-real numbers, and that's true. Over here on the outside, we'd have non-real numbers, sometimes called imaginary. All right. Now, uh, I had a student last year that uh, said a good one to me. They said, well, if it's uh, imaginary numbers, does that mean like 11 -teen? And I thought 11 -teen was uh, humorous. Uh, that's not quite what I was looking for. For instance, if I put the square root of negative 4, that's an example of a non-real number. Now you might say, well, why is that the case? Why can't we take the square root of that? Well, remember what square root means. It means what number can you multiply by itself such that you get that number? Well, there's no number that you can multiply by itself, at least that I know of. If you know of uh, one, then uh, we're going to make some money together uh, that you can get to get negative 4. So nothing, right? Because imagine, if you take negative 2 and you square it, you get 4. Positive 2, you square it, you get positive 4. It's just not going to work. So that would be an example of a non-real number. All right, example number two. Uh, this is an example I'd like you guys to try on your own. I'd like you to uh, first uh, maybe estimate where you think uh, these would go in, in what order, and then uh, see how accurate you were by using your calculator. So this works two ways. I actually want to make sure that you guys can enter, for instance, the cube roots and fourth roots on your calculator, um, just to make sure. So as an example here, uh, I'm just going to estimate, and then after when I have my calculator, I put it on a number line, I'm going to see what kind of order I think is going on here. Well, I'm going to say that the cube root of negative 2 has got to be the smallest because it's negative. All right. um, the next one that I think is probably going to come is going to be, it's kind of a toss-up between these two for me. What number do you multiply itself to get 2? Well, that's going to be like approximately 1 point something. Uh, what number do you multiply itself to get 6? It's going to be 1 point something. I believe right now, then of course this is just estimating, so it doesn't mean it's going to be right, but that would be the order for those ones. Okay. So I've dealt with those first ones. Now I've got these next ones coming down the line. Well, I know the square root of 9 is 3, so that means the square root of 11 has got to be a little bit more than 3. Uh, the fourth root, hmm, fourth roots I don't know very well, so what you could do is you could generate them. For instance, 2 to the power of 4 is just 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. So if 2 to the power of 4 is 16, then 3 to the power of 4 is going to be probably a lot more. That's 81. Well, 
Um, that means that the square root of, or sorry, the fourth root of 30 is probably going to be closer to 2 than it is to 3. And since this one was greater than 3, then I can probably say that this will be my order, like so, that the fourth root of 30 would come next. Okay. And now what I'd like you guys to do is uh, go use your calculator. I'm not going to show you this, but make sure that you can enter these. Um, you might need to touch base with me because everyone's calculator is different. That's why I can't really show you how to do that part um, to do some of those tougher ones. All right, so that concludes our lesson on uh, what is or is not a rational number.